yes, mathematics is all about numbers. But where did these numbers actually came from? Who got these numbers? Who introduced these numbers? What is the history of these numbers? Let us see. Well, even the Stone Age people had some concept of number, though their number system was way limited than our number system. So let me take you back to Stone Age now, and let's go through this journey of numbers. But remember one thing, that in this time period, people know nothing about numbers. So it was fairly easy back then. They did not have any need to know exact numbers, nor did it matter exactly how many animals were there or how far. All that mattered was that there were some animals near or far. They would hunt those animals and go that distance without any need of knowing exact numbers. Later, they realized that they could not communicate or tell the other person exactly how many animals were there. And so they realized that they would need numbers. It is said that they probably started counting by fingers. But since they had just 10 fingers, they could not count beyond the number 10 using fingers. So for larger numbers, they started using tally marks. However, that too wasn't sufficient for large numbers. So they started using stones or pebbles to represent numbers. This too was always not possible. Early man was still far away from numbers, but at least now they could understand by looking at a pile of stones that larger the pile, more the number of animals. Centuries later, we moved on to a civilization where people not just hunted animals, but they started domesticating animals. From caves, they moved to huts, Barter system was started. People started interacting and exchanging things. Now, for the exchange of things, they had realized the need of exact numbers. So they invented these 30 numbers. These are the first 30 numbers that they used. One was called Tim, Sim, Pim, Plop, Bam, Ram, Slop, Clop, Fam, Amba, Samba, Jolo, Polo, Molo, and so on. So they kept on numbering and naming these different symbols. They gave each symbol a name. They called number 29 as Maya, and 30 was called as Zaka. Now 30 meant a whole lot of numbers. So Zaka was a whole lot of numbers. There were a lot of problems with this number system. Though they had come up with 30 symbols and names, but it was extremely difficult to memorize them. Not just this, mathematics was becoming really difficult. For instance, if you had BAM cows and someone took away Tim cows from you, then you would be left with Plop cows. Now, it would take so many years for anyone to memorize all the different combinations of these 30 symbols. Centuries later, Egyptians came. Egyptians had varied interests. They were extremely fascinated with numbers. They constructed tall pyramids and were also interested in astronomy. For all this, they had invented large numbers. Let us take a look at the Egyptian number system now. They used objects from everyday life as symbols. A rod stood for one. They used two rods to show two. 
Similarly, three to show the number three, and so on till nine. They realized that using ten rods for ten was getting too long, so instead they used a horseshoe to represent ten. So a horseshoe represented ten. They would use two such horseshoe to represent twenty, and so on. So nine horseshoe would represent the number ninety. Again, they realized that using ten horseshoe to represent the number hundred would be too long. So instead, for hundred, they used the symbol of a coiled rope. Egyptians made a symbol for every power of ten. They used a lotus for thousand. For ten thousand, they used a pointing finger. For a lakh, they used a tadpole, and an astonished man was used to represent ten lakhs. Egyptian number system was much better and efficient than previous number systems. However, there were problems with this number system too. They did not have a word and symbol for every possible quantity. Then they came up with the idea of combining symbols. Symbol for each was repeated as many times as possible. So if they want to write the number 9999 they used 9000s that is 9 lotus to represent 9000 9 coiled ropes to represent 900s 9 horseshoe to represent 910s and 9 rods to represent 91s now you can see that the problem here was that these numbers took a whole lot of space and time So from Stone Age we moved to the primitive civilization, and then the Egyptians. All these gave way to our modern number system that uses only ten digits. It is assumed that they too must have counted on their fingers because only ten different symbols were used, which they called as fingers or digits. It took a lot of toil and effort. to arrive at these numbers which almost everyone is familiar with these days these modern number system came from medieval medieval came from arabic arabic in term came from hindu and the hindu came from brahmi you would realize that brahmi had only nine numbers zero was not introduced then zero came in much later when the hindu script was written So these are the ten numbers which everyone is familiar with, which is a modern number system. So we've seen that this is a modern number system that uses ten numbers or ten digits. Well, using these ten symbols, we can write any number in our modern number system. But now, since you know. how we actually got these numbers how much hard work has got into getting these 10 symbols i hope you can appreciate the amount of hard work that has gone into these numbers so don't take these numbers for granted so these are the 10 numbers and now we have seen that our modern number system has evolved from a lot of civilizations but in a way we can say that it is not much different from what the egyptian number system was let us see let's take this simple addition problem in our number system which is 342 plus 420 plus 205 which gives me 967 now if i look at this same problem in egyptian number system it would look like this which seems pretty complicated but yet again let me remind you it is not much different from our number system how let's see if i look at the egyptian number system as groups of symbols if i group the symbols together and compare these groups of symbols with the digits of our modern number system then you would find some similarity 300s 300s 410s 410s 21s 21s and so on you will find some similarity now further if i place these groups also into columns of ones tens and hundreds 
if I place it in columns of ones, tens, and hundreds, then you would see much more similarity. What is clear between these two number systems is that the Egyptian number system has no symbol for the number zero. There is no symbol here or here for the number zero. Another difference is, which is more important, that in our number system, the same number two is being used for ones place, in tens place, and in hundreds place. So the same number two here represents two ones. The number here is representing two tens. Whereas here, this number two, the same symbol is representing 200. Whereas if you look at the Egyptian number system, they have different symbol for two, a different symbol for 20, and again, different symbol for 200. So importantly, what we see that in Egyptian number system, they need not place the numbers into groups or columns because there was no need of that. They had different symbols for different digits, and hence there was no need of placing it into different columns, and so zero was not needed. But if we look at our modern number system, our modern number system follows positional notation. What does positional notation mean? That same digit is used and same digit represents different quantities when placed in different positions. So this number two is representing two ones also, number two is representing 20 also, and 200 also. And this is why the need of zero was felt, and zero was used to represent a column that did not contain any digits. What would you call this two as? Is this two ones? Is this two tens or is it 200? So the same digit, when I put a zero in front of it, it becomes 20. When I put two zeros, it becomes 200 and so on. So importance of zero was felt and that's why zero was included later. We've seen how zero was included much later. Why was zero included much later? Because there was a need for zero that was felt as a symbol for columns that had no digits. So that's how our modern number system follows the positional notation. So we've seen the 10 digits which we use in our modern number system. Now there's an interesting side to it which says that how do you actually, how did numbers actually came about? Why was this symbol used for one and not any other symbol? An interesting study says that number one actually came from the number of angles. So you can find only one angle in this number one, and so this number one came. Similarly, for two, we have this symbol because it makes two angles. Three because of three angles. Similarly, four for the four angles. Five makes five angles. Again, six would make six. Seven angles in case of seven. For eight, I have eight angles. And for nine, I should get nine angles. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I get nine angles in case of nine. That's why nine has this shape and this symbol only. And similarly, two has this shape and this symbol. Now, since zero came in much later, you can well understand why zero was shaped like this. Because if I have zero which looks like this, then that means there are no angles. So zero shows no angles. And zero was called shunya. So this is a modern number system which uses 10 symbols. And we can use these 10 symbols to represent any number.